Now, have you become more reliant on the internet for things like shopping and doctor's appointments since the start of the pandemic? You are far from alone. And things might get more challenging again if we see more COVID restrictions in the coming months. Now, charities are warning that people without digital skills or access to technology could really struggle. New figures from the Good Things Foundation found that in 2019 there were over 850,000 people here in the southeast who simply didn't use the internet at all. Aggie Chambre has more. For some in Eastbourne and the surrounding area, these computers are a lifeline. Chris Honeyset has been giving out free PCs since 2013. We were on benefits, a couple of kids, couldn't afford a computer. Uh, I managed to get a gold one for the kids to use and thought, hang on a minute, if we're in that boat, then there must be other people in the same boat as we were. Tubbs Computer Supplies gives to those who ask, which was about 15 per month but that has rocketed under COVID and is now closer to 150 in the last four weeks. People are stuck at home, people are self-isolating, can't do homework, can't work. It's that bridging that digital divide where people have got the money, they've got a computer, whereas the people that are poor, they can't get online, they can't do the work, they can't look for work. Um, if they're off sick, they can't make doctor's appointments, they can't live. Here we go, guys. This is that for you. One beneficiary is Kelly, who described her lockdown computer, which today she is swapping in for a laptop, as a godsend. I can't afford a computer. I definitely can't afford a computer. So, yeah, um, but, yeah without um, Chris's help, Tubbs, uh, yeah, uh, yeah it, it would be different. Life would be different. If I didn't have the PC, I wouldn't be able to apply for jobs or even to speak to Universal Credit. If you don't log on when they ask you to, then you know you're in trouble straight away, and it's sanctions and stuff like that. So I've been I've been lucky enough that if I didn't have it, then I, I probably would have been in trouble by now. And as chances of further restrictions increase in the southeast, charities are warning urgent action is required to help bridge the digital divide, especially for older people who need extra support accessing online services. In March, when the lockdown happened, I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked and saddened at the state that people were in, that people didn't have devices, they didn't have data. There were lots of people who had never been on the internet ever before, and they were completely shut out from all of the support services that they needed. And actually, it's now winter time, so people are going to be even more excluded. The weather is going to be harsh. They're not going to be able to go out. And we know that we can help them. We know that we know how to do this, but the government just doesn't seem to recognise that this is a public emergency. That was Helen Milner. She's the chief executive of the Good Things Foundation. We're here to talk us through some of this. Another Helen, Helen Dobson from Citizens Online, a charity which focuses on digital inclusion. Helen, your charity runs the Digital Brighton Project. Tell us what you've been doing there. That's right. We run the Digital Brighton and Hove project. We have uh, we help anybody in the area to get online and to improve their digital skills. We have engaged with over 300 organisations within the area, and we also have over 400 digital champions. A digital champion is someone who is confident to help others with their digital skills and get online. Of course. Traditionally, this work has been done face to face. So you're sat with a learner with their device, talking them through the mm. basics. But of course, with COVID, this hasn't been possible. So we've had to provide this support remotely to people over the phone. Yeah. Um, it really is a lifeline to people. Yeah. And COVID has shown that being online is actually an essential service. Um, and there's too many people who don't have access. Um, in the film we heard from Chris at Tubbs Computers in Eastbourne, I was really touched by the fact that you've got this guy who had a problem of his own and found a solution and then he shared that solution with other people. It's pretty wonderful, isn't it, when that happens? Absolutely. And in Brighton, we work with an organisation um, called Tech Take Back and they've uh, done a similar kind of scheme. You'll see pockets of this everywhere. I think, uh, you know, People are very willing to, to help with this problem, but it doesn't really go far enough. And what we think is that the government should be doing more to support these kinds of mm. schemes. Um, but it is a fantastic example, you're right. OK, so what do you need to hear from the government? Do you want them to set up their own schemes or to come behind you guys and other organisations like yours and support you? I think they could give 
our organisation and plenty of others who are doing this kind of work, some financial support, absolutely. You know, what we're showing in projects like Digital Brighton and Hove is this fantastic example of community coming together. You know, we're working with the most vulnerable people in society. We've helped the homeless with devices during COVID, also people with mental health issues, people suffering from dementia. This makes an absolutely vital difference to people's lives uh, improves their health outcomes you know it's a win-win for everyone but the government aren't doing enough to support these community um, organizations who are already doing a bit and we have loads of volunteers working for us but of course they still need to be supported and managed and given safeguard and training there's yeah. lots to do and okay. yes the government could fund some of that, that right Let, let's bring our politicians in shall we stay with us um well let me start with 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 tristan osborne for labor it's not like the government isn't doing anything at all here free ipads for care homes free laptops for some less well-off pupils i'm sure students at your school will have benefited from that you're, you're a teacher have you seen the benefits of what the government has put out there in terms of tech? Absolutely. So we are uh, many trusts rolling out sort of Google Chromebooks and iPad schemes have done for many years. Um, and also we are seeing increasing teaching of, of IT and, and engagement. However, um, simply having a laptop doesn't mean you have a Wi-Fi connection, doesn't mean you have IT literacy. And that's the challenge. Giving people a laptop doesn't mean they're literate in terms of how they're using that. So there's an educational divide there. In addition to that, we are seeing, um, and the ONS has reported this, 50% of over 75 men and 38% of over 75 women are still not using the internet. Mm -hmm. Many people also don't feel comfortable um, with digital security. So there are many hurdles still to overcome. This is a good thing. And obviously one of the positives of the virus is uh, increasing use of technology but we cannot ignore that many people may choose not to do that yeah. and it cannot be used as an excuse to cut services okay. in councils and other, and other bodies. Caroline, you were nodding to some of what Tristan was saying there um, about, you know, you might have the tech, but what about the Wi-Fi connection and the digital know-how? What more would you like to see from your government? Well, I think, you know, you, you alluded earlier that the government is doing a great deal and is supporting, um, you know, organisations uh, across the country who are looking to uh, reach out to their communities and sort of build this uh, digital resilience. But I, I subscribe 100% to how desperately important it is that we close down this uh, digital divide. Tech has been the saving grace, if you will, during these lockdown months, but it has equally sort of deepened that divide. Uh, the government has, has given unprecedented support in all sorts of different areas. One of the things, of course, was that very swiftly rallying around around local government, local councils, and, and where we were so very um, uh, effective in Eastbourne was that partnership between local government, government funded, of course, local government, and volu the voluntary sector. So I met the wonderful Chris, and it was wonderful to see, to see him there. I met Chris um, in the early days uh, through a project that my local um, 3, 3VA, uh, local community group who uh, lead groups and charities in Eastbourne, were doing to try and really promote inclusion and bring mm. bring people together in this way because it's true they are you know you are disadvantaged if you aren't online. So I'm looking now to partner with Chris and we are really going to magnify his tremendous work. And so I'm calling to every every home in Eastbourne to look to kit that they may no longer okay. use. Because sometimes the answer is in the community. Government assistance, of course. Let me but go. Actually, the yeah. power of well, local well, people we, responding well, to their friends, neighbours yeah. and family. That's something uh, of, of huge and I don't value. Think I mean, any, never Caroline, out. I don't think anyone, anyone watching will be anything other than full of praise for, for Chris and what he's doing. And I'm going to go back to Helen for just a moment. Some, some references there to older people who seem to be among the most affected, not only by COVID, but by lockdown restrictions too. And I wonder whether you have a sense about what this says about us as a society and what we should do to change that. I think um, I'd like to highlight exactly what Trish said with that point, that it isn't just a case of giving somebody the technology, it is helping them to use it. We know that digital uh, exclusion is closely linked to social isolation as well. So it is about you know looking for the most vulnerable in society and when people are older and they're shielding and they're isolated, this is exactly what we need to be doing in terms of getting in touch with them and supporting them 
building their confidence to do things for themselves online, but also it's that friendly ear and that support. And we know that it has a huge impact on health outcomes when people are connected. And of course, during lockdown, being online is a way to do that. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today, Helen. It was lovely to get your perspective.